<laughs> okay, are we starting? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're starting. I so mad. Hey, Matt. All right, so we're going to start now. What do you do if you don't know what sigma is? So the problem is uh, when sigma is an unknown, which happens most of the time, because the only two ways that you would know sigma is in theoretical mathematics or if God told you in a dream. Those are the only two ways you get to know sigma. Okay. Um so yeah, I said that joke like four times already in fifth period, so but, no, there's a guys don't need the charity laugh. What's that? You're wasting time. Yeah, we're cool. Wow. Like five no. coolest classes. Wait, who's right. fifth period? Oh, 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 wait for break. <laughs> Alright, so if sigma is not known. So what we need to do now is we need to know what to do if sigma is unknown. Now the problem is sigma is rarely known. So it's very unlikely that we would know sigma. But the problem will sometimes give it to you. But in real life you never know it. So the confidence interval that we're going to use now is the one that you'll use most of the time. And when sigma is unknown, the issue is you don't get a full normal curve. Um, you get a different distribution. It's not a normal distribution. Um, it's a distribution that we haven't talked about yet. Anybody have any idea what that could be? Michael? Um, I believe that's the uh, student's T distribution. Oh, well done. Good thinking. What? <laughs> right? book last night, Joe. So, um, a student's T distribution is um, it's like a normal curve. It's symmetric, and it has like a very similar shape. But where a normal curve would look like this, the only difference is a T distribution is like slightly got heavier tails. Like it has more area under the tails here and here, but it has like the same bell shape, it's just heavier tails at the end. So it's, it's kind of, it's normal light. It's, it's very similar to normal distribution, but it's not quite the same. And what it turns out is as your sample size gets bigger, T, T distributions are all based on sample size. So each different sample size has a different, slightly different shape of the graph. And as your sample size gets bigger, your T distribution looks exactly like a normal curve. But for smaller sample size, it looks less and less like a normal curve. So as N gets larger, your T distribution gets closer to a normal distribution. To find T confidence intervals, you're going to need to find critical values, T critical values. So it's the same formula that we use for Z confidence intervals. So a Z confidence interval has this formula, the mean plus or minus your critical value times your sampling error. A T, a T um, interval is going to have this formula, your sampling mean plus or minus a critical value times your sampling error. So here are the differences. This critical value comes from a normal curve. This critical value comes from a T distribution. This population standard deviation is given in the problem. This is the sampling standard deviation. It's, you don't have the population. <coughs> you do not have the population standard deviation, so you can't use sigma. If you had sigma, you use a t distribution, or a z distribution, not t. So the big question becomes, how do we find these critical values? That becomes our goal. 
How do we find these critical values? Any questions on this part so far? Right, so to find these critical values, how did we find these critical values? What, what function on my calculator did I use? Yes, Richard. You used your inverse normal function. Excellent. Thanks, Richard. <laughs> Good job, Richard. That was some of this. All right, so... Um, that was unnecessarily loud. That was really loud. So, um... That was really loud. All right, so we use inverse normal to find our t or Z critical values. So I'm going to use inverse T to find my T critical values. Okay. So if I want the 95% critical values, if I want the 95%, middle 95%, if I want the middle 95%, I am going to have 5% on the outside, which is going to be divided into two sections. It's going to be what on the ends? 2.5. 2.5. Thank you. So if I want to get this, this number right here, <laughs> I'm going to put my area as 0.025. I'm going to put it as a decimal, 0 0.025. And then it asks for degrees of freedom. Every T-curve has a degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is based on the sample size. It has a simple formula. <coughs> degrees of freedom is whatever your sample size is, minus 1. So suppose I had a sample size of 25. What would my degrees of freedom be, Maddie? 24. 24. So I put 24 in here, hit enter, and my critical value is negative 2.0639. Now, T curves are also symmetric. So once I find the left critical value, I also find the right critical value. So this would also be the right critical value. T curves are also symmetric, so once I find the left critical value, I also find the right critical value. We're going to try one problem from section uh, 7-2 in your textbook. It's, it's problem number 9. Workplace homicide. Oh, that's kind of inappropriate for this week, isn't it? Uh, let's try. Oh, 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 oh. Let's try. Uh, oh my God! Oh my God. <laughs> let's pass it. Too soon. Let's pass it. Too soon. Oh, 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 Here we go. Whoa. Let's try problem number five. <laughs> visiting networking sites. <laughs> All right. A sample of 10 networking sites for a specific month has a mean of 26.1 and a, a sample standard deviation of 4.2. Find the 99% confidence interval for the true mean. So this is one of the numbers that I need to do the problem. I need to know that I'm looking for the 99% confidence level. I need to know that my sample size of these networking sites is 10. I need to know what my sample mean is. My sample mean is 26.1. I need to know what my sample standard deviation is. My sample standard deviation is 4.2. I'm going to use this 99% confidence interval to figure out what my critical values are. So my critical values aren't 99. My critical values come from the T-curve. I have the middle 99%. How much do I have on the outside, Jenna? Sorry, I wasn't going to say what. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I have the middle 99%, how much do I have on the outside? Uh, you have 0.5 on the outside. Good, I have a half of a percent on each side. 
We're at ten. We're at ten. Time. Time. Oh.